Hi, I'm Hiro, and today I'm going to take you through a preview of what's offered in the Allo Masterclass series. So today we're going to work on TT Basana, and I'm going to take you through a masterclass of that. So roll out your mat, and if you have a couple blocks, bring a couple blocks, totally optional. When you're working on TT Basana, you want to build up a little bit more protraction into the shoulders as well as hip opening um, in this adducted hip flexion. So we're gonna warm up a little bit in a tabletop, also warming up the forearms as well. So from your tabletop, coming up onto the fingertips or you can come up onto the knuckles if that's a bit intense, you're gonna pause there and really push the ground away, feeling your shoulder blades spread around your rib cage. Take a big inhale here and on your exhale, come back down. Go ahead and take a cow pose, reaching the heart through, looking forward, keeping the belly drawn in. On your exhale, find a cat pose and back into neutral. From neutral, warming up those forearms, those wrists, pressing up into the fingertips or the knuckles, up to you. Protract, make sure you externally rotate your arms and really drive the ground away. Take a big inhale. On your exhale, release. Take a cow pose, big inhale. On your exhale, cat pose, belly draws in and back into neutral. You're gonna do that one more time. So from neutral, coming up onto the fingertips, really pushing your finger pads into the ground, push the ground away, shoulders right over the wrist, and here back of the head presses up towards the ceiling as well. Because when you're doing arm balances, you're not looking down towards your navel. So big inhale, on your exhale, release. Cow pose, and cat pose. All right, from here, sit back onto your heels, untuck your toes, and we're gonna reach the arms forward in a child's pose. Take a big inhale here. On your exhale, walk your hands over to the right and keep rooting your butt down towards your heels. Take a big inhale, especially underneath your left armpit. Feel it opening up your lat, as well as a little bit of your serratus. And exhale, come back into center. Let's go over to the other side. Reaching the hands forward, but really sitting down against the heels so that you really drive that stretch into your lats. Big inhale. Exhale, come back into center. All right, getting into a little bit of the hips. From your tabletop position, extend your right leg out to the right. And we're really gonna drive this into the inner thighs and the hamstrings. So instead of the whole foot down onto the ground, just the inside, inside ball of the foot and the inside heel, take a big inhale. On your exhale, drive your belly in and start to drive the foot down towards the ground and even plugging the femur, the thigh bone in towards you. You should feel a stretch there, a nice isometric stretch. If you want a little bit more, reach your right arm up and exhale you can thread the needle. Your head doesn't need to come down onto the ground. Just getting your shoulder or your elbow down onto the ground is totally fine. Big inhale. On your exhale, come back into center. Now holding this position, protract your shoulder blades, pushing the ground away, and slowly start to externally rotate your right leg. Really squeezing the outside of your glute as you do this. Take a big inhale. Exhale, come back into center. Now swing the right leg behind you and all the way over to the left, snuggling the left knee or the right knee behind the left knee, spreading out the toes to the sides and sitting back. You don't have to sit all the way back onto your heels. The more you squeeze the legs towards each other, the more this outside glute is gonna be active and you'll feel a stretch here. Just one big inhale. On your exhale, Ease up out of this. Now you're gonna rotate your hands over to the right and slide all the way out into a pigeon pose. If you wanna make this more active, really driving down this left knee and this left foot into the ground, take your hands off the ground. Big inhale here. On your exhale, with a straight spine, start to lean forward. Take big inhale. On your exhale, come out of this, walk your hands over towards the top of the mat, swing this right leg all the way back out to the right. Now we're gonna make this an active stretch. So flaring the toes out to the sides, 
pushing the ground away, building out that coordination in the shoulders, lift up the right leg, really squeezing the outer glute. Now here, try not to turn your chest out to the side, keep your chest facing down and hug the belly in. Squeeze up a little bit higher, just for three, two, one, and release. We're gonna do that again, this time we're gonna externally rotate. So externally rotate the leg, draw the belly in, push the ground away, lift, hold it there for three, two, one, and release. Come back into center, let's do this on the left side. I'm gonna turn around so you can see. So left leg out to the side, just the inside foot down. Start to warm up by pressing the inside foot down and plugging the thigh bone in, pushing the ground away. If you wanna find a little bit of a rock back and forth, that's totally fine. We're all tight or more open in different areas in our body. Just one more inhale. And on your exhale, come back into center, externally rotate the leg, driving the heel down into the ground, plugging the thigh bone in. Again, you can rock forward and back a little bit if you want. And release. Now from here, swing the leg behind you and all the way out to the side. Snuggle the left knee behind the right knee, turn the toes out and slowly sit in between your heels. And here I'm making it more challenging by squeezing my legs towards each other. And that's why I don't need to sit all the way down, okay? One more inhale. On your exhale, come out of this a little bit. Walk your hands over to the left and slide yourself into a pigeon pose. Taking a big inhale. And of course, if you need support, leave your hands down. If not, arms right here or here. Straight spine, lean forward to your degree. No belly on the thigh. Big inhale, in through the nose. On your exhale, hands down towards the top of the mat. Slide it all the way back out. Left leg out to the side. Now we're gonna make this an active stretch. So first things first, protract, pushing the ground away. Back of the head lifts up and squeeze the outer glute. Lift the leg as high as you can. Three, two, one, and release. Externally rotate, do the same thing. Squeeze, a little bit more into the hip flexor as opposed to the outer glute. Two, one, and release. All right, turn towards the top of the mat. Tuck the toes, feet hips width apart, downward facing dog. You can pedal out the feet side to side, rock the hips side to side if you want. Any kind of movement is great. Let's move a little bit more into a bit of flow as well as opening up the inner thighs a little bit more. So inhale, lift up the right leg, open up the hip. Squeeze the outside of your glute right here to lift the leg up a little bit higher. Big inhale. On your exhale, come forward, top of a push-up. Draw your knee in towards your chest. Protract, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Try to get your chest as far away from the ground as possible and take your knee out to the side as high as you can. Big inhale here. On your exhale, set your foot down, right foot down to the outside of the right hand. Drop down onto the back knee. Now here, finding a little rock side to side. Really squeeze the legs together so that you have a solid foundation and see if you can come onto your fingertips. Take a big inhale, nice and long through the spine. On your exhale, see if you can come off your hands. Hands behind the back is fine. Hands into prayer, totally fine. And then breathe. Instead of just dropping the pelvis down, can you squeeze your back glute and squeeze the legs together? Really driving this front knee out to the side. Nice big inhale. On your exhale, hands back down, straighten out the front leg, coming off the back knee. Same thing again, if you want a bit more support, you can drop down onto the back heel, come up onto your fingertips. Keep squeezing the legs together. I know this is a bit awkward, very different from a traditional pyramid pose, but if you think of TT Basana, your legs are out in a straddle. So try to have your chest facing forward on the inside of the right leg. One more inhale here. On your exhale, hands back down. Spin onto the ball of the back foot. Push into the ground. See if you can lift up your right leg off the ground. Inhale, sweep it back, three-legged dog. Take it into a flip dog. Big inhale, reach. On your exhale, flip it on over. Roll through your vinyasa. One vertebrae at a time. 
Take a big inhale in your up dog or cobra and exhale back into your downward facing dog. Straight away into the left side. So inhale, left leg up, open up the hip. As you open up the hip, keep your chest facing down and squeeze the outer left glute to get that leg a bit higher. Inhale here. On your exhale, come forward, knee to chest. Push the ground away as much as you can. Deep inhale. On your exhale, left leg out to the left, as high as you can go, and then slowly step it down. Drop down onto the back knee. Now here with this front foot, my toes are pointing out to the side a little bit, coming onto the fingertips, squeeze the legs together, see if you can balance. If you're comfortable here, you can always see how low you can bring your chest down onto the ground without using your hands or pressing your shoulder against your knee, okay? So breathe just for three, two, one. Hands down for a bit of support, coming off the back knee and dropping down onto the back heel. You wanna make it more challenging, you can stay on the ball of the foot, that's totally fine. Then with a straight spine, come out to your degree, squeeze the legs together. This is great for building up strength in your hamstring as well. So inhale, long spine, exhale, tilting at the pelvis to see how low you can go. And if yours looks like this, totally fine. Just for three, two, one. Hands back down onto the mat, shoulder width apart. Spin onto the ball of the back foot, swing it back. Flip dog. Big inhale here. On your exhale, flip it over. Roll through your vinyasa. Deep inhale. Exhale, back into your downward facing dog. All right. So let's take this a little bit further. Inhale, reach your right leg up, open it up, bend the knee. On your exhale, come forward, top of a push up, knee to chest. This time we're gonna step it all the way through. Come on up into crescent pose. In your crescent pose, squeezing the legs together, drawing the belly in, flexing your back glute is gonna allow you to find a deeper stretch into your hip flexor and you can raise the arms. Inhale, maybe a little bit of a back bend. On your exhale, chest comes forward, rotate your chest to the left, either forearm down or hand down onto the ground, spinning onto the ball of the back foot for a side angle. Take a big inhale. On your exhale, look towards the back of your mat, turn your back toes back and drop all the way down into Skandasana and then into a seat. So take your right hand and grab onto your left ankle and reach your left arm up and over. If you can reach the foot, fine. If not, even better. Just keep reaching towards the top of the mat and opening up the chest. Nice big inhale here. On your exhale, come back up. Lift up into your skandasana, maybe with no hands. Come back into your side angle. Inhale to spread through the arms. On your exhale, maybe come onto your peace fingers. And then your index finger, no hand, slowly straighten out the front leg for triangle pose. If you need a bit of support, you can always place your hand down, shin, floor, thigh, forearm, it's all good. Nice big inhale here. On your exhale, come back up, parallel out the feet, and forward fold. Prasarita Padatanasana. If you wanna open up the shoulders a little bit more, you can interlace your hands behind your back and take it up and over. Make sure you're spreading the shoulders apart so that you're staying nice and broad and you're really stretching into the backs of your shoulders and the front of your pecs or actually front of your shoulders, the front of your pecs. Take a big inhale. On your exhale, slowly release. Come on up halfway. In your halfway lift, belly draws in. Take your hands off the ground. One more inhale. On your exhale, hands down, come up over towards the top of the mat, slide your right leg back, open it up, bend the knee, take a flip dog. Reach the heart up, pushing the ground away with this left shoulder, and exhale, come on back. Take a vinyasa, skip it, roll through it, traditional one, it's all good. Big inhale, exhale, downward facing dog, straight away to the left side. 
Left leg up, open it up, bend the knee. On your exhale, come forward, knee to chest. Step it all the way through. Come on up, crescent pose. Right away, squeezing the legs together, firing up this back glute. If you wanna take a little bit of a back bend, you can. On your exhale, chest comes forward. Rotate the chest out to the right, back heel comes down, side angle. Inhale to reach. On your exhale, slowly come up, turn the back toes back, find your skindasana, and then sit all the way down. Grab onto the ankle here. You really wanna push this knee out to the side by squeezing the outer right glute, reach up and over. Deep inhale. And exhale, come on back. Maybe try this with no hands. Lift up, come back into your side angle pose. Inhale here. On your exhale, get a little bit lighter onto the hands. Maybe no hands, no arm against the leg and straighten out the front leg. Keep squeezing the legs together so that you really make this into an isometric stretch into your hamstring as well as your adductor. Big inhale here. On your exhale, come on up, parallel out the feet. Same thing, prasarita. Fold forward here. Deep inhale. On your exhale, let's open up the shoulders a little bit more. So walk the hands forward, still keeping the hips in line with the legs. And you're gonna walk the arms over to the right, stretching out just like we did in that warm up, taking a big inhale into this left side. And on your exhale, walk it on back, take it over to the other side. Hips stay nice and neutral so that you really find the bend from this area. So that's where you target the stretch. Big inhale here. Exhale, come back into center. Draw the belly in, really fire up the inner thighs. Maybe take your hands up off the ground and come all the way up. All right, from here, turn the toes up, hands down, spin onto the ball of the back foot, sweep it back, take a flip dog. Big inhale, reach up. On your exhale, flip it on over. Take a vinyasa. If you want to take a more traditional vinyasa, more than welcome to. Inhale. And exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, from your downward dog, come down onto your knees. So we're gonna work a little bit into the arm balances. If you don't have crow pose, this is where you wanna work on your crow pose. I have a couple blocks here. You don't necessarily need them, but it's good if you're a little bit afraid of uh, falling on your face. You can put a block right in front of your forehead, so it's a little bit of a buffer. Come into a malasana-ish position. Your heels can stay off the ground. Now you're gonna take this little divot on the inside of your patella, your knee, and place it right above your elbow um, where the attachment to your tricep is. And that's usually a good place. That's how I like to teach uh, crow pose. Place your hands down, shoulder width apart, bend your elbows, lean forward, and instead of just going for your forehead down, have it be there as a safety net, okay? So really gripping to the ground before you even lean forward, try to push the ground away, spreading the shoulder blades, finding that protraction so that your serratus is nice and fired up so that you can just tilt forward and maybe your toes come off the ground, okay? Maybe one foot comes off the ground and as you tilt a little bit more, the other one comes off the ground. But try this out a few times, really warming up your forearms, pushing the ground away instead of sinking down into the posture and give yourself a break. Now in your break, instead of stretching out your forearms, we're going to just come into this flexion, just warming up your flexors. You can even shake it off a little bit, maybe even shaking the shoulders out a little bit. And then we're gonna take it a step further. So you're gonna do a crow pose on one side and you're gonna kind of prep for a TT basana on the other. So level one, we're gonna keep both feet down onto the ground and really work on our foundation. Our foundation is all in this area, hands, forearms, shoulders, serratus anterior here, okay? So I'm gonna start off with my left knee in a crow pose position, hands down, shoulder width apart, and I'm gonna take my right leg out to the side, okay? And it's slightly bent here. Now, as it's bent, you can start to work your shoulder underneath the knee a little bit and create a little bit of a shelf in your tricep. Now here, start off by maybe lifting up your right leg only. 
okay? Pause, check to see if you're just dumping down like this, and if you are, see if you can push down into the ground a bit more and keep that leg hovering. Maybe start to straighten it a little bit. It doesn't have to be super straight, it can be bent, that's fine. And then you can play with tilting forward. Maybe forward a little bit more. Maybe your left toes comes off the ground. And then reaffirm that protraction in the shoulders by pushing the ground away. All right, come on back. Give yourself a break. Shake out your forearms. Maybe do some of these. Shake it off and then we'll go on to the other side. So right elbow into the knee or knee into the elbow, hands down, shoulder width apart. Left leg up, steps out to the side, work the shoulder underneath, just the heel down. Maybe you stay there, work on protracting. Maybe you lift up the leg, maybe that's it. Maybe you're just right here and just really, really working on the foundation of pushing the ground away. Or you can start to lean forward until the toe comes off the ground, okay? Come on back, give yourself a break. Now, this is a good place to assess, do I feel anything on the outside of my wrist, inside, or just the whole wrist altogether? Most commonly, you'll feel something on the outside of the wrist, and here's why. So, if your hands are too close together, then your elbows are gonna wanna tilt out to the side to uh, make a shelf for your legs. So you can take your hands a bit wider, okay? Um, also, if you have tight shoulders, as you protract, there's a tendency to internally rotate. Internally rotate your humerus, your arm bone, okay? So fight for that external rotation as you protract. If you're having trouble, turn the hands out. So let's do example one, common mistake. Shelf, leg out to the side. Look at where my elbows are relative to my wrists. So naturally, over time, there will be wrist pain, okay? Same thing, internal rotation, focusing on this part of my arm, okay? Same thing. That doesn't feel good, all right? So fight for that external rotation, fight for that protraction, and see if you can hover here. All right, if that's good, we're gonna give our wrists a break and work on a little bit more detail in the legs. So sit down onto the mat, face me. We're gonna come into a straddle and you don't have to go into the deepest straddle that you can. You don't have to go into the deepest straddle that you can. And just bring your legs to 90 degrees. It doesn't matter if you have more open inner thighs because we're gonna make this super active. So driving the heels down into the ground, and it's okay, as you do that, your knees are gonna bend a little bit. Just start to focus on anteriorly tilting the pelvis. Basically just keep your spine straight and hinging at the hips as you reach forward. No hands on the ground. We really just wanna rely on very, um, isometrically opening up our posterior chain arc, backs of our legs. Take a big inhale, draw the belly in. If you wanna add some shoulder mobility work here, you can. And what that looks like is reaching your arms forward and focusing on that protraction. I like to make a thumbs up and then start to rotate, externally rotate as I keep punching my arms forward. Breathe, take a big inhale. Make sure you leave a little bit of space, a little bit of energy to bring yourself back up without your hands, okay? So, bend your right knee, hands down behind you, straight spine, bend, bend in, and then see if you can bring your knee to touch your shoulder. And maybe it just looks like this, that's fine. You just scrunch up your eyebrows, just like I do, as long as you keep breathing. Nice big inhale, on your exhale, Engage your hamstring, squeeze, set your foot down, outside edge of the foot comes down, and just squeezing the outer glute. Take a big inhale. This is already a stretch for me, okay? I'm very actively pressing the outside edge of my foot and squeezing my outer right glute. Big inhale. On your exhale, come back into center. I like to rotate about, pivot about the heel and drop the knee in. This might be a stretch, stay here. This might be a stretch, stay there. If it's not, you can start to fold forward. Inhale, come back into center. Pause right here, belly in, straight spine. Squeeze, try to get your knee to touch your shoulder. 
If you want a little bit more, you can start to straighten out the leg and set it down. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So sliding the heel in, sliding the heel in, pausing to about a 90 degree angle. Big inhale, exhale, squeeze. And I'm using my hands to just keep my spine upright and straight. And then from here, hamstring work, heel down, squeezing the outer glute. And take a look at your right toes. If your right toes are doing this, keep that slight external rotation happening. Big inhale, exhale. Let's find that internal rotation. And fold forward. This is my fold forward, by the way. <laughs> so come on back, hands down. Chest faces me, back into center. Squeeze the knee up into the tricep. Maybe kick the leg straight, totally optional. Set it down. Let's do another round. So big inhale, on your exhale, pressing the heels down, reaching forward, protracting. If you're a bit more flexible, you can bring your nose down onto the ground. Just try not to have anything else touching. This is great for press handstand work and come back up. Okay, so let's dive right in. Come back towards the top of the mat. Uh, we did a ton of hip flexion, abduction, external rotation. We're so good to go. Traditionally, you could use blocks. Um, and the purpose of the blocks is so you have a little bit more room um, to lift up your legs, okay? And you'll see what I mean. I like to bring my fingers over the edge, just like so, as opposed to hand completely on onto the block. The reason being is this is a foam block. Even if you have a cork block, it a, has a little bit of give. So it puts your wrist into slightly more of a, more than a 90 degree angle. So you have this slight hyperextension. So here you have a bit more control to press your fingertips in on the, on the edge and drive down through the knuckles, which is really great for building up strength in your forearms for more arm balances, all right? So blocks down, shoulder width apart, step in front of the block, turn your toes out a little bit like you're setting up for malasana, drop down, lift up the heel on one side, work your shoulder behind, drop the heel down, work your shoulder behind, drop the heel down. Now pause. Start to bend the elbows and see if your elbows are coming out to the sides, like this. <laughs> like this, okay? Then that's usually pretty indicative that your hands are too close together. If that's the case, just take the hands a little bit further apart, the blocks a little bit further apart, and then start to bend the elbows directly behind the wrists and push the ground away before you lift your toes up. Now coming up onto the tippy toes, you're gonna keep driving, keep drawing the belly up, focus on that protraction in the shoulders because that's your foundation, and then maybe your toes just hover off the ground, okay? The last bit is just fancy work. You can start to straighten out the legs. As you do, really refocus on pushing the ground away as much as you can, and then you can straighten out a little bit more. Take a big inhale here. On your exhale, come on back, all right? Take a break, give your wrists a little bit of a break, and then I'm gonna teach you a transition out of this. We practice doing half crow, half TT basana. We're gonna start off in a TT basana and get back to that half crow, half TT basana, okay? So, hands down, work the shoulder behind, elbows in line with the wrist, lean back, protract, come up into your TT basana, and then from here, bend one knee, slide it back, pause. Really focus on pushing the ground away. Maybe you slide the other leg back, pause, and come on out. All right, guys, good job. Um, move the blocks out of the way. I'm gonna take you through a short little cool down. What's probably sore are your forearms and your hands. So I'm gonna give you a juicy self massage to end the class. Drop your right forearm down. Palm faces up. You could use the other form or the knee, depends on how you like your massages. I like the Thai ladies to like step on my back when I get massages, so I'm gonna use my knee. Bring your knee right into a form. You can control how much pressure you're pushing here. You can rub it around, 
work your way down towards the wrist. If that's too much, you can always just, like you're kneading dough, do this. That's totally fine. Flip the palm down, do the same thing. Just a little bit of self-love, which is always important. Make sure you do the other side. You can go with the knee. My fave, oh, so good. Usually when it comes to the yoga practice, one of the uh, weaker points is the wrist. So spending extra time to take care of your wrist and all the muscles that are connected to the wrist, like forms, is gonna be really important. Okay, flipping it over. This one is a bit easier to get into with an elbow or the forearm. Like so. And then coming on back. Now working into the hands, spread all your fingers. And for me, usually it's just these, these three fingers that handles a lot of power of holding yourself up into um, arm balances. So just those three fingers down, start to drive down into the ground and slowly drop your palms down towards the ground, stretching out the forearms. And your forearms doesn't need to be completely down because then you're just hyperextending into the wrist. This is all about stretching out your flexors right here. Nice big inhale. And exhale, let's move into the shoulders. Shaking the arms out. Now you're just gonna bring knuckles behind your back. And as you bring knuckles behind your back, work on rolling your shoulders down and then spreading your shoulder blades apart. It's gonna feel like you're pushing your knuckles into the sides of the back, right where your QLs are. And that's what you want. And then you're gonna take the flaring of the ribs out and just make sure that this front part of the shoulder isn't doing this. Scoop the shoulder blades down your back, right into the rib cage, hug the front ribs in. Take a really big inhale. And exhale out. All right, so lying down onto your back. Shaking your legs out. Taking a big inhale. On your exhale, draw your right knee in towards your chest and slowly take this into a supine twist. We're not here long, so really utilize every inhale, making it super juicy. Inhale into your side ribs. Exhale, coming back into center. And let's do the other side. Drawing the left knee in and over to the right. Taking a big inhale. And exhale out. Coming back into center. And we're gonna take this into just a short Shavasana. So shaking your legs out, shaking your arms out with the intention of after your next breath, on your exhale, you're just going to let your legs fall open and your arms fall open. Before you actually drop down, taking a really big inhale in through the nose, filling up the lungs, but also filling up the belly, feeling your belly button push up towards the ceiling and your low back pushing down into the ground. And exhale out the mouth. Coming into a normal breathing pattern without any effort. With every exhale though, feel yourself sinking down a little bit heavier into the mat. Each exhale a little bit heavier into the mat. For me in my practice, I like to really reflect in my practice, in my shavasanas and 
And what I'm reflecting on is the practice that I just had, but more so, how did I show up? Was there a bit of ego involved? Did I fall and get down on myself? And this is a good time to remind yourself of the gratitude. The gratitude that you have for being able to practice and try and play. And if you've ever done something more than once and you know, one of the times it's, it's, uh, you're, you're not really in a good mood and another time you're in a good mood, it's such a different experience. And this is a great time and a great place to practice shifting that mood so that we can shift our reality. So take a moment and find a point in your practice where you started stepping into that limiting belief or getting down on yourself and see if you can reframe that moment. And once you really embody that shift in energy within yourself, within your body in this moment, see if you can breathe that in. And exhale out. All right, Yogi, I'm gonna leave you here in Shavasana, or if you're ending with me, thank you so much for flowing with me. You can check out more of these kind of classes on the IG stories or on Aloe Yoga's website, aloyoga.com. So, namaste.